safe harbor for certain charitable contributions made in exchange for a state or local tax credit. So if you made charitable contributions in exchange for a state or local tax credit and your charitable contribution deduction must be reduced as a result of receiving your expecting to receive the tax credit, you may qualify for a safe harbor that allows you to treat some or all of the disallowed charitable contribution as a payment of state and local taxes. Somewhat unusual of a situation, but you know that would usually come up in a more higher income uh, type of situation for tax planning purposes, possibly. The safe harbor applies if you meet the following conditions. You made a cash contribution to an, et an entity described in section 170C. In return for cash contribution, you received a state or local tax credit. You must reduce your charitable contribution amount by the amount of the state or local tax credit you receive. If you meet these conditions and to the extent you apply the state or local tax credit to this or a prior year's state or local tax liability, you may include this amount on line 5A, 5B, or 5C, whichever is appropriate. Uh, to the extent you apply a portion of the credit to offset your state or local tax liability in a subsequent year as permitted by law, you may treat this amount as state or local tax paid in the year the credit is applied. For more information about this safe harbor and examples, you can see Treasury Regulation 1.164-3J, U.S. Possession Taxes. So include taxes imposed by U.S. possession with your state and local taxes on line 5A, 5B, and 5C. However, don't include any U.S. possession taxes you paid that are all allocable to excluded income. Tip, uh, you may want to take a credit for U.S. possession tax instead of a deduction. So now you've got this question in terms of which one would be benefiting you more, a deduction uh, or a credit. Tax software often helps to make these kind of uh, distinguishing questions. You probably want to run it both ways and see which would be most beneficial. If you're in that situation, you can see the instructions for Schedule 3, Form 1040, Line 1, for details. Line 5A, State and Local Income Taxes. If you don't elect to deduct general sales tax, include on Line 5A the state and local income taxes listed next. So note that when we when we have the taxes that were deductible for the federal income taxes it used to be i believe it was just the state uh income taxes that were deductible which was kind of interesting because again the states are sovereign to tax any way they want to be taxing so when they have that law in place it really severely benefited or or burdened however you want to look at it the the states that had an income tax were, were the ones that are going to benefit from that kind of situation. And if they had like some other tax system that they thought was better for their particular state, such as a sales tax, then uh, they didn't benefit. So then they tried to adjust that so that so they couldn't remove the state taxes. What they probably should have done is never have the state taxes deductible in the first place, but they can't really remove that. So they tried to even things out by then adding the sales taxes to be deductible for the state's that choose to have a sales tax. And so now we've got this, this system where you can deduct the state taxes and, and you get a benefit if you're in a state that has the uh, state income taxes like California, for example, then you can deduct those. And if you're in a state that has a sales tax, then you get some benefit for the sales tax. So uh, state and local taxes withheld from your salary. Raise your salary during 2022 so if you're in like california with a state tax then the withholdings are going to be much the same they try to mirror the same structure as the federal income tax system so for forms w-2 we'll show these amounts so forms w-2g 1099g 1099 r 1099 miscellaneous and 1099 nec may also show state and local income taxes withheld however don't include on line 5a any withheld taxes you deducted on other forms such as schedule c e or f so it's usually fairly straightforward if you're in like california you're going to have the the w-2 for example which will show the withholdings so state and local income taxes paid in 2022 for a prior year such as taxes paid with your 2022 state or local income tax return don't include penalties or interest now when i say it's pretty straightforward i mean it's pretty straightforward with the data input and usually when you look at the withholdings for the state, 
you're thinking about the state income tax return, the tax calculation, and then how much you paid. But also note that you paid that taxes out of your paycheck to the government, and that's the thing that might be deductible as a Schedule A itemized deduction if you have the capacity to take the itemized deductions. All right, once again, state and, state and local income taxes in 2022 for a prior year, such as taxes paid with your 2021 state or local income tax return don't include penalties or interest. So this is the other kind of funny thing. You've got this cutoff problem because it's usually going to be determined on a cash-based system, right? So you might have made a payment for 2021 tax year for the state taxes which you actually paid in 2022 because you paid it because you owed money when you made your taxes but you actually paid it in 2022 so you might be able to deduct that as an itemized deduction in 2022 note that your your software often is quite useful to help you with these cutoff uh cutoff situations as well and it's useful to see what the software does and then deconstruct it and, and try to figure out, okay, are we in a cash-based or, or accrual-based system? We're typically in a cash-based kind of system here. So state and local uh, estimated tax payments made during 2022 include any part of a prior year refund that you chose to have credited to your 2022 state or local income taxes. So now if you had a refund uh, in 2021, for example, and you said that you wanted to apply it to the estimated payments. So maybe you have a Schedule C, for example, and then you th then you did your taxes for tax year 2021 by April 15th of 2022, let's say, and then you got a refund from the state and you said, okay, just take that refund and make it my first estimated tax payment, applying it to the taxes paid in 2022. Well, that would be kind of like the same thing as if they gave you the refund and then you gave it back to them and said, now this is my payments for 2022. So you're paying taxes in 2022. So that might be included in uh, itemized deductions if you're itemizing for state tax deduction. Mandatory contributions you made to the California, New Jersey, or New York non-occupational disability benefit fund, Rhode Island temporary disability benefit fund, or Washington state supplemental workers compensation fund. So mandatory contribution to the Alaska, California, New York, uh, New Jersey, or Pennsylvania State Unemployment Fund. Don't reduce your, de your deduction by any state or local income tax refund or credit you expect to receive for 2022 or refund of or credit for prior year estate and local income taxes you actually received in 2022. Instead, see the instructions for Schedule 1. So you might say, hey, look, I, if I if I paid the tax in 2022, but then I calculated my 2022 state taxes and I'm gonna get a refund. So what is that gonna do? So now what, what do I have to do? Say this is my taxes that I paid in 2022, but then I'm gonna get a refund in 2023. So shouldn't I have to take that refund that I know I'm gonna get and reduce the amount that I paid by the amount that I'm gonna get refunded? And the general answer is you don't typically do that because the, the idea is going to be that we just want to keep it on a cash-based system. If you paid it in 2022, you paid it. And then when you receive the uh, the refund in 2023, well, if you got a benefit from the deduction in 2022, as we talked on the income side, then we'll include that state refund as income. So that's why when we talked about the income side, we said, if you got a refund from the state, you might have to include it in income. You only include it in income if you got a benefit from the state tax deduction in the prior year. Now, you might say, hey, that leads to some shady business that can happen right there because you might say, well, I'm just going to maximize the, the payments, my state taxes. I'm going to pay a whole bunch of state taxes in 2022, lowering my, my taxable income in 2022 and then i'm just gonna and then i'm gonna get the refund and i'll include it in 2023 so so there you can imagine someone trying to like manipulate the system that's the problem with a cash-based system and of course that would only be beneficial if like 2022 was a really high income year and you're like i'm gonna if, if it was beneficial to lower 2022 because in 2023 you're going to have a low income year because you're not going to make any money that year. You made all the money this year in some whatever business you're in. So you'd like to, you know, if you had income next year, it's not going to it's, it's not going to hurt you as much as 
you'd rather get the benefit this year, right? You have these timing problems. That's the problem with a cash based uh, type of system versus an accrual based type of system. But the benefit is it's easier to do, right? 